Okay, welcome to the Chapter 2 Notebook. We'll be looking at the code associated with Chapter 2 and running a bunch of the examples from Chapter 2. Now, this is a Google Colab Notebook, or a, what's often called a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, it can be run in a d number of different environments. Uh, you can download and install Anaconda and Jupyter on your desktop. You can uh, run, I think they're called Sage Notebooks on uh, Amazon, or um, there's another environment on Microsoft uh, that provides, but we'll be uh, using uh, initially these Google Colab notebooks, uh, and later on we'll point you to some of the other alternatives uh, for it. Um, so you can find this with the link of the course. Also, if you go to your Google Drive, you should now have a folder called Colab, and your notebook should be listed there also. Um, just like Google Docs, you want you can access these, but you probably want to make your own copies of these. So when you open up them, you probably want to save a copy in Drive um, and, and work with them there. Now they also work with GitHub, but it's harder to edit them uh, directly in GitHub. So I usually suggest for students to uh, work and use a copy in Google Drive. And if you want to also save a copy to GitHub and use GitHub, that's fine also. But now, unlike uh, Google Docs and stuff like this, they don't necessarily save automatically, so you do have to, to save after you make changes to this. So some t uh, try to remember to do that uh, with these. Um, so again, this should be tied into your chapter, so you'll be looking at chapter 2 here, and we'll just kind of walk you through here. And this is just a s sample project, kind of talk to you about how you set up a simple uh, system. Um, how you get the data, how you visualize the data, how you prep the data, uh, how you select a model, fine-tune the model, present your so solution, and launch and monitor uh, your systems. And hopefully some of this should look familiar uh, from your previous courses in this Masters in da Applied Data Analytics uh, where you've talked about this process of how do you select data and organize it, how do you discover and visualize data, uh, You've talked about different models and how you've used them, and then uh, we'll talk about more machine learning specific models in this course. But again, the, the structure that we use for this is the same structure you've probably seen in your other courses here. Uh, so that's why we're doing this as kind of our preliminary chapter before the course actually starts. Um, so again, we'll be working with some real data. In this example, they're going to use housing data from California, uh, the California housing prices. Uh, for this. And again, I'm not too worried. You've already talked, hopefully, about uh, this cl collecting data and organizing it in some of your other courses. Uh, it talks about a performance measurement here. And again, one thing I'll warn you is that there's a fair amount of math in this textbook. Uh, the author likes to delve into some of the theory behind some of these measurements. Uh, and again, this since this is an applied uh, machine learning course, we will largely be skipping over those sections. If you do have a good math background, um, these are fine. Uh, these are good things to look at. But again, it, uh, you don't necessarily need to know the mathematical derivations for these concepts in order to use them appropriately in most cases. Um, I've got a, a math um, undergrad uh, major, and I, I, I kind of enjoy math. Uh, and I also have an advanced degree, uh, you know, my PhD is in artificial intelligence and machine learning and neural networks. So uh, I've done a lot of this math. And if you have linear algebra, differential equations, that sort of stuff, some of those concepts will help here. But again, you can learn a lot of this material without doing this. So there'll be a fair amount of times where there'll be a whole sections of mathematical derivations here, which we will skip over uh, in our course. So all of this stuff we will skip over. Um, Okay, and then we're going to get the data, and so here's where we're actually going to use some code where they start showing code. They talk here about setting up a workspace. We're actually going to go back here, and our workspace is already set up uh, here. We just have to do some importing of some libraries. So our we're doing some importing of some libraries here, and then here's our set talk about working with real, da real data, and again, we're quoting this page 36 uh, right here of the textbook. Um, where we're getting that. And then we're downloading data. And so he, the author, will give us some examples of code. So here's the author's code on how to download the data and set this up and, and use it. Um, I've actually simplified it. The author does it a little more complicated way than necessary, uh, downloading a zip file and zipping that. That's what's fine if, if you're on a, your own environment, your own machine. 
um, but we're just working in a cloud environment so we can just download this file directly so we're just downloading this uh, data directly so our code is a little simpler I've simplified the author's code a little bit um, and I can mention before this he goes over how to install Jupyter Notebooks and use Jupyter Notebooks on your own machine we won't be doing that but though I will try to provide you a link uh, to do that if you want um, but uh, we'll be using this cloud-based collab which is a basically a cloud version of these Jupyter Notebooks for us so okay so we downloaded the data now we're gonna look at this data a little bit uh, with some code and you've been using R uh, to look at data and now we're gonna use Python to look at data so the way we, we we're loading all our data into this variable called housing and then we say housing dot head five to display this we can ask for information about this uh, we can ask for uh, the count like how many values are, are there of each type here uh, we can describe the data uh, the mean and standard deviations of each of the attributes uh, here but basically this is just column data uh, features so we have a number of houses or region uh, listing here and then we have features latitude longitude a median age number of rooms etc uh, here in our data um, and again we'll look at some ways of plotting different values of this uh, and again I'm just showing we're just showing the code here and just showing what you we're not really going to go into re any real detail how this stuff works it's just a sample project so you can say okay we can visualize the data in different ways so that's all you want to get out of this is we can visualize the data in different ways and again we'll we'll delve more deeply into that in future chapters we're just doing some overview of how the process here uh, next thing we want to look at is creating a data set uh, that we'll work with so again we'll create the data set and we'll have code here for creating the data set we'll split our housing data into two sets of data a training set and a testing set and we'll do this in many of our examples throughout this course <clears throat> and again the notebook should follow along with with the code here um, he does talks about some uh, manual ways to do this poorly and why they don't work and <clears throat> spends a lot of time talking about ways that don't work and then eventually we'll get to a way that works uh, here and that's the way we're using so we're just jumping right to the one way that he has that does work now he does go into a more advanced way called stratified shuffle uh, uh, data and again that's uh, goes beyond what we need in this course so we'll be skipping over this section on stratified uh, data so the next section is uh, again more visualization of the graphs uh, here and so we've included some of that stuff we talk about correlations here and looking for correlations in the data in different ways and so much of that uh, code is also provided here uh, in different ways uh, and so we can see how uh, different parts of the different features are correlated so this looks like a pretty clear correlation where we have a line here between this is between median income uh, and meeting house value so uh, the more money uh, the owner has the higher value house they tend to have that seems to make sense and so we can see some correlations here in other places we don't see much correlation between some of this data uh, visually He then talks about creating different combinations of um, uh, variables here, so like total rooms divided by the number of households and things like that. So it looks at different derivations of data uh, in the textbook. Um, and then we talk about preparing the data for machine learning algorithms. Now, sometimes these notebooks get rather long, so I've got these broken up into sections and then you can collapse each section uh, as you go or as you're working on it and sometimes they'll they may start collapse so here you can see we have at section one and there's nine hidden cells section two and there's ten cells section three and there are seven cells so you can open expand and collapse these sections as we go so as you probably have seen before in your classes we do a fair, some data cleaning and again we're just showing examples here you don't have to necessarily understand how this works we're just talking about the general process here 
Uh, but again, we're looking at houses with incomplete data. Maybe there's some houses that um, have incomplete uh, data sizes and stuff. So far, we've just looking at this code. Now let's actually try to run this code and see how this works. So I'm going to go back up at the top. Each section here, it says um, you have to complete the previous section zero usually do to get this to work. So I'm going to go back up here. So every uh, notebook is going to have a section zero, which sets up some stuff. And you always have to run uh, section zero before you run any of the other sections. So let's talk about how this is structured here. So in uh, these notebooks, there's two different kinds of uh, cells here. There's text cells with descriptions and then code cells. And code cells will have a little arrow next to it that will have you run that cell. So I'll click on that and it'll run. Uh, and then uh, it does all this importing and it'll print out the results. So right now it'll print out libraries imported and, and show that this is run here. Um, so now I can go down to this cell and click on this and run this. Now. Uh, there are some options as far as running. You can just run, uh, select to run all the cells if you want. I typically like to go through here and um, when I click on a cell, if I hit, um, sorry, I'm editing that cell here. So yeah. undo that. Okay. If you hit shift enter on a cell, it will automatically run that and go to the next cell. So I often hold down shift and just go through and hit enter and then I can see the results of this as I'm going through and make sure all this code is running. And what's nice about that is when you do that, um, rather than doing a run all above, you get to actually see uh, the data run and you can see if there are any problems and errors uh, with the data. And then you can go in and edit these cells also. Um, and again, right now you don't know the enough material to edit these cells, uh, but in future ones you'll do a fair amount of editing of this material. So again, when we're cleaning up the data here, um, we can see that uh, there are a number of rows with uh, incomplete, uh, where there's nulls in there. There's uh, 1,800 rows, uh, houses with uh, in, with nulls in some of the values. Uh, so again, the book talks about data cleaning uh, and how to get rid of certain rows. So it talks about three ways of handling like null values in a row. One is to get rid of uh, that uh, corresponding uh, districts uh, or houses, housing areas. Uh, the other way is to get rid of the whole attribute. If we're, if we're keeping track of the total number of bedrooms, maybe we just remove the number of bedrooms from our data set. This is pretty drastic stuff because we lose the data for, ev for all the rows, uh, all the house areas, even the ones that have uh, those bedrooms in it, uh, have that values uh, here. And then uh, the other option is to set the values to zero or the mean. Uh, in this case, is looking at doing the mean. So it, it suggests some different ways of doing it. So in our code, again, we've got that. We've got these different ways of setting the data. One thing that's interesting with Python is that uh, the Python language uses a pound sign for comments. So uh, here I have this option two here, but I don't want to run option two, so I've got to comment it out. So in my code cells, anytime I see a comment, that's going to comment that line out. It'll ignore the rest of that line here. So typically we put it on the right side to add a comment here, but again, if we put it early on, it's going to ignore that whole line. So that's these are commented out versions. So at times I'll take code from the text and I'll comment out for it. So now I just have one version of this uh, that is um, finding any of the house regions, housing regions that don't have this total bedroom attribute, and then we're um, we're just del uh, deleting it. What is what we call drop it. Uh, so anything without a value, we're dropping it here. So I can run this code. Now one thing that's interesting is you can actually go back and rerun this code in different orders. So what is shown here is 17, 18. It showed that I ran this 17 first and 18. So every cell that I've run will have a number next to it showing when it was executed. But you do not have to necessarily go in order of these cells. 
uh, like a, a program, a typical programming language would, I can go back up here and I can rerun this cell again. So there used to be uh, 1800 uh, cell or uh, house regions without data in it. Now if I run this again, it'll show zero. So because this shows that I have deleted these cells. Uh, but I can see that the, the numbers are different. This is 18 and now 19. So I've run this after this. So just remember you can run code out of sequence uh, here. And um, that's, uh, we, that's sometimes helpful. But again, uh, you have to be careful because sometimes you do need to have run the code before a cell rather than after a cell. Uh, so. So for example, if, if I were to restart this notebook and try to run some of these cells here, way down in section uh, 2, before running the section 0 cells, uh, the data wouldn't be loaded in and I wouldn't be able to run this. Uh, this variable here wouldn't be for, uh, defined, for example. That's why um, in all of our notebooks, uh, section 0 we marked as you must run this section before running any section before and then you always have to run this section 0 but then after that you can jump to any of the other sections so I could skip over section 1 and go right to section 2 if I wanted if I was coming back to this after running section 0 okay so I can run the cells out of order uh, I'm deleting some things and again next thing it talks about is handling text categorical data uh, here and talks about again, again you can read uh, this on uh, the notebook if you want but there are some text categories uh, is this on an island is it nearby the coast uh, is it near the ocean or is it within one hour of the ocean uh, are, are different text characteristics here so I can actually see those in my data here um, if I scroll uh, there's different values near bay inland these are text values and we're going to convert those uh, to some other values. So I'm going to display this. Uh, so here we see this text as we go. Um, and so we'll talk about some ways of encoding this data uh, in different options uh, for this. So giving a, a number to each value uh, using something called one hot encoding uh, for these values and how that's set up. Um, one hot encoding, we uh, create a whole bunch of different fields. Uh, so, like, uh, is this on an island? Is this near a bay? And then, with we have this set of uh, values, and only one of them is uh, a one, and everyone else is a zero in this uh, subset. And that's why we call it one hot encoding. One is hot, is turned on, and the other ones are zeros. Uh, we'll look more at one hot encodings later on. Uh, when we're analyzing data some more. But again, so that they just introduced those concepts here. Talk about handling uh, categorical data. And again, this is one area where, um, again, these things change frequently. There's different ways of doing it. I really don't like the way the author does it. Uh, I'm used to using a shorter technique uh, for this. So this is the technique I use. It just a different library. Uh, than the author uses. So that most of the times I'll follow the author's tech, uh, code, but every once in a while I'll comment, like here's the actual author's code, and I'm commenting that out and creating it using a slightly different code. So sometimes you'll see that here. Next it talks about feature scaling, scaling the data in different ways and setting that up. Um, and again, we're just following along with the text. And again, hopefully you've uh, talked a little bit about uh, feature scaling uh, here. Talks a little bit about setting up a pipeline. Uh, we're going to be skipping over this pipeline stuff for now and getting to it later, but it talks about setting up a pipeline for managing your data. Then it talks about training a model. Uh, it uses a linear regression model and tries to predict the house price given the other features uh, of the house. So again, in here, um, this is section three on training a model. Uh, so again, I have some code here that re that repeats all of our uh, data cleaning stuff so that you can just jump, after doing section zero, you can just jump down to section three. And here's our section for uh, training our model. Um, and setting that up. And I've sometimes I simplify the code here that the author does. I try to use much of the same code that he does. 
So in particular, he creates a linear regression model, and then he fits the, uh, the model to the housing data using the housing labels. Uh, he does some predictions uh, for that, and then calculates the root mean square error here and talks about what that means and how to interpret that. And so I do something similar here. We set up a linear regression model. The author tends to use uh, shorter variable names, so I often will use longer variable names in my code to make it a little easier to understand. So we're setting up, we're, 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 uh, setting, we're training that data using the fit function. So again, it's very similar to what he's doing here, just with a different, a longer variable name. And then we're, we're scoring the technique here. Um, and then we're uh, calculating the root mean square and printing that out. Um, so again, sometimes the author will derive more complicated methods for scoring and evaluating these uh, areas. Uh, and so sometimes I'll simplify that uh, in different ways. So for example, I'm just using a simple score uh, uh, method that's provided to give us a score of how well this model is doing. Um, then we talk about analyzing the results, talk about maybe using a different model here uh, to look at how that works. And then it, the future sections talk about fine tuning and monitoring your systems. And again, we will we'll skip over these sections of the text. You feel free to, to read through these, skim through these if you want. Uh, but again, uh, the idea of this is just to give you a kind of overview of a typical machine learning section without diving into actually how any of the sections work that's in uh, the subsequent chapters. So, well, there are a couple bonus sections here. Now, Python's a new language for you. It, a lot of people find it relatively easy to understand, but there are some issues with it. Uh, one of the main ones is it uses uh, indenting uh, for. Um, for grouping things rather than uh, a bracket. So in a typical language like in Java, you might have an if statement in it and have a curly bracket and another curly bracket to create a block of code. In Python, you just indent a block of code to, to, to create a block. Uh, but here's a, a simple introduction to Python. If you want a quick overview of Python, there's lots of them out there, but this is one I, I find useful for students to learn. Also, if you're have some questions about how these Jupyter notebooks work, some ideas for shortcut keys and stuff like that here. There's a little introduction to Jupyter notebooks that again uh, I find some students ha uh, find useful. You don't have to do either of those but uh, again some students find it useful. So that's an overview of this chapter 2 and kind of gives you an overview of this uh, collab environment we'll be using and how we'll be using this. Hope you enjoyed it. And again, remember you can post uh, in, uh, questions in the discussion areas uh, and you have them.